السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من من الشيطان الرجيم، بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين، والعدوان إلى على الظالمين، والعاقبة للمتقين، اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم، وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. Dear brothers and sisters, in the interest of نصيحة, sincere advice, the reflection that I want to give tonight, I want you to look inward, inshallah ta'ala. And let's think very deeply because we're getting now into crunch time, the most important 10 days of the most important month of the year. So bismillah. I'm going to ask you all a question first. On the day of judgment, what are the barriers to your good deeds being accepted? The Prophet some said that there is a specific moment that a person is bankrupt on the Day of Judgment, rendered muflis, bankrupt on the Day of Judgment, despite their prayer, despite their fasting, despite their qiyam. What are those deeds? I can't hear anybody. <laughs> what? what is that, uncle? Bad manners, jazakallah khair. What else? Hukuk al-ibad, the rights of the servants, mashallah. Anything else? One of the sisters said something? Brothers? Okay. We know the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, that a person comes on the Day of Judgment and they have their prayer, they have their fasting, they have their siyam. Can you imagine how many Laylatul Qadrs they have caught? A lifetime. A lifetime of seemingly doing the good deeds. But, sabbahada wa shatamahada wa khtabahada wa darabahada, and in different ahadith, different narrations of the hadith, those things are in different order. But the point is, despite all of that, you cursed this person, you backbited this person, you slandered this person, you hit this person, you denigrated this person. Basically, you had a nasty tongue. So, hukuk al-ibad, the people that you hurt, line up and they take your good deeds until you have nothing left. Laylatul Qadri khayru min alfi shahab. Can you imagine Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months? A thousand months. And let's say that a person caught Laylatul Qadr for 50 years. 50,000 months of good deeds, gone. Why? Because of the people that you hurt with this. It's a warning from the Prophet Wasallam. The barriers to our good deeds being accepted or being profitable on the Day of Judgment. Now, that's not what I want to talk about tonight. I just want to establish a premise for a moment. That as we're getting into the last 10, we need to make tawbah from those things that might take away everything from the last 10. Sheikh Yasir talked about salah, prayer, taking the most of our prayer. And honestly, I appreciated the reminder because it wasn't a feel-good reminder. It was a warning. <laughs> Usually you hear the good things about prayer. It was a warning not to be forgetful for your prayer, right? With your prayer and lose out on your prayer. This is beyond that. This is your good deeds going to waste because you're not reforming your akhlaq, you're not reforming your manners. And so if you want your ibadat to be accepted, you have to reform your akhlaq. Can you all remember that? If you want your ibadat, your acts of worship to be accepted, you have to reform your what? Your akhlaq, your manners. If you want your acts of worship to be accepted, you have to reform your manners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to reform our manners and to perform our acts of worship. Allahumma ameen. This is the time to do it. In this life, there's also another prominent aspect of these next 10 nights, which is dua to Allah. Constantly making dua. We have lists that we go to Allah with. You've been asking Allah for all this time. Laylatul Qadr is the night of decree. So you want something to happen in the next year? That's your night. That's the night that your next year is going to be decreed. In the next 10 nights, your next year is going to be written down. Think about the, the consequence of that, including, by the way, those who plan to go to Hajj. May Allah write us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. So in these next 10 nights, something is going to happen with your decree, right? And what is the barrier to your accepted dua? And that's where I want to stop for a moment and think about the surahs that we just passed. Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the ideal society that got polluted by some of those bad akhlaq, those bad manners, slander, gossip, until they did not spare our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, our mom. Our mom was slandered. You love your mother? <laughs> You're reading about the story of your mom being slandered with the worst type of slander. Our mother was slandered by people we also love. 
not the hypocrites Ibn Ubay ibn Sarur, some of the Sahaba fell into the trap, passing it right and left. They took it and took aspects of it and passed it. And Allah forgave the companions, not the hypocrites. But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That's a strong warning. I'm warning you never to go back to this again. Nothing like it, the remnants of it. Don't you ever go back to anything like that episode ever again. Allah let you off with a severe crime. And yes, there were some people that had to pay the penalty of slander. And there were others that Allah knows, they, they, they passed the slander, but they were not amongst the main slanderers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered an amnesty, but a warning with that amnesty, don't you ever go back to that way again. Let there never be an episode like Haditha'tul Ifq in the society of Medina again, like the slander of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in the society of Medina again. That's a strong warning. Honestly, if you're reading that ayah, the strength of it, it is such a, an admonishment, the strength of it. Like it's not even, Allah does not even talk about what the consequences are. It's just Allah is warning you. I'm warning you, do not ever go back to anything like that again. Don't let that happen in the society of Medina again. Just like Uhud, don't let the disobedience of Uhud happen again. And they never did, right? The Sahaba never had another Uhud episode. And the Sahaba never had another Ifq episode. Alhamdulillah, because they were a people who took the Quran very seriously. And then you see in Surah Al-Furqan, Ibadul Rahman, the servants of the most merciful. And Allah mentions their tawbah, their repentance. Why? Because all of you will sin. All of you will sin. All of the children of Adam will sin. All of us will fall at times. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions in the qualities of the servants of the most merciful, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا except for those who repent and they believe and they work deeds of righteousness. And Allah re-emphasizes that by the way. Man taba wa amila saliha. The one who not only repents, but who puts in the place of where they used to sin a good deed instead to hold that place. They cut off the means to sin and they now have the means to good deed. They now have means to a good deed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for those people, Yubaddirullahu Sayyatim Hasanat. How merciful is Allah? Allah switches their sins to good deeds. Now, Surah An Nur was a warning to society. As a community, don't mess up like that again. You don't get two Haditha'tul Ifqs. You get one, you messed up as a community, make tawbah to Allah and learn the lesson as a community. Ibadul Rahman is very individual. When you messed up, turn back to Allah and put in the place of your sin a good deed. Why do I want to build on this inshallah ta'ala tonight? Because just like there are barriers to our good deeds having any weight on the day of judgment, the barriers to our dua having any weight in this life is our insistence on sin. So the insistence on poor akhlaq make our ibadat meaningless. The insistence on sin render our dua's void. How do we know? The hadith of the Prophet A person calls out to Allah and says, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord. But look at your dress. Look at your food. Look at your sustenance. You're insisting on haram, and then you're insisting on Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to answer your du'as. How does that work? Yes, Allah answers du'as. But what kind of effort are you putting in? You're insisting on your ways, and then you're insisting Allah answer your supplications. It doesn't work that way with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you On what basis are you going to be responded to? You, you're not willing to reform your ways, but you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer every one of your supplications. Why? Because I listen to, you know, my khutbah, uh, I think tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> it is tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday, right, Sheikh? Yes, tomorrow's Friday. My khutbah tomorrow will be about making the most of Laylatul Qadr and things of that sort, right? So I followed the tips. I, I read the dua. I, I said, Allah minnaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anni. I prayed the entire night. I caught tarawih. But my duas, look, for myself and for you, Ramadan resolutions means difficult, difficult, difficult sacrifices. And what I want to really advise myself and all of you, and wallahi it comes from a sincere place, I hope, for myself and for you, remove the, the means 
that are causing you to constantly fall in the sins over and over and over again. You know, for some people, that means scrub your social media. If you're not gonna do it in Ramadan, then when are you gonna do it? You need to delete your social media. For some people, that means I need to exit certain WhatsApp groups or I need to delete WhatsApp altogether. For some people, that means I need to delete certain contacts. Honestly, there are certain friends in my life that just provide a constant avenue to sin for me. For some people, that means I really need to consider at this point, if I'm in a haram business or I have a haram level of earning, I'm gonna cut it off now. For some people, that means reforming your dress. For some people, that means reforming your food. For some people, that means reforming your sustenance. But every one of us has to look deep, 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 deep. Because when you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're going to insist on these ways and you're not willing to make those sacrifices, that is the barrier between you and your supplication. Your du'as become mechanical at that point. How beautiful is the du'a of a person that says, Ya Allah, I'm changing. Ya Allah, I'm taking the next step in my journey to you. Ya Allah, I'm looking at myself and I'm not going to be the, I'm not going to insist on these things, no matter how minor they are. Remember the Prophet said, Beware of the minor sins. Some of you are planning weddings right now for after Ramadan. <laughs> how are you planning that wedding to be? Think about it, right? Every single aspect of your life, you know, what are you thinking about doing right after Ramadan? Every single one of us look deep in the mirror as we go into these 10 nights and say, how do I delete my past? Because I want Allah to do tabdeel, to switch my sins to good deeds. But in order to do that, I need to switch the means to my sins with the means to good deeds. And Allah is merciful enough to where He will clean the slate. But am I gonna clean my own slate? Am I gonna turn my own page? I trust Allah Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, to clean the slate if I sincerely turn back to Him. But will I fill it? with good. And so while we're talking about Ramadan resolutions, we're less than two weeks left in Ramadan. If you weren't going to make the change in these next two weeks, if you're not going to do it in Ramadan, when are you going to do it? If you're not going to reform your earnings and the things that the Prophet said are barriers to dua, when are you going to do it? And if you start thinking about, well, but that would mean I have to change this and I have to change that. You know how the shaitan, I'll end with this. You know, Prophet Sallallahu said, when you're about to give charity, and I'm not gonna fundraise yet, okay? There's no fundraiser right now. You're about to give charity, the shayateen open their mouths and they tell you what? Poverty, 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 poverty. Vacation, trip, this, 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 that. They hold you back from your charity. That's with every good deed. You're about to turn the page with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. But what about your friends? Well, wait a minute, what about this? What about that? What about your social gatherings? What about your family? What about these people? What about those people? What about this factor? Wait a minute, but if you get this out of your life, oh, but wait a minute, maybe you'll need to communicate with that person again. The excuses. Shaitan just wants to make sure the means are still there. He's gonna come out of his chains with a vengeance after Ramadan. We all know how we feel on the day of Eid. He will come out of his chains with a vengeance. He just wants you to maintain the, the pieces in place, the means, so that you go back to those things. Al Muhasaba. Let's hold ourselves accountable and let's make some difficult sacrifices. And that's how you get your du'as answered. Just like we don't know how the sins affect our lives, they devoid, they make our lives devoid of barakah. They bring in our lives ibtila. They bring in our lives trials and tribulations that we don't even trace back. The same thing, dear brothers and sisters, with our du'as. اللهم نقنا من الذنوب والخطايا التي تكبس الدعاء ونقنا من الذنوب والخطايا التي تنزل البلاء. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to purify us from the sins and from the shortcomings that cause our duas to not be answered. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to purify us from the sins and the shortcomings that cause tribulations to descend upon us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to purify us from the bad characteristics and manners that cause our acts of worship to not be answered, not to not be accepted. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to fill our hearts, to fill our eyes, to fill our minds, to fill our limbs with that which is pleasing to Him and to purify us from all that is displeasing to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow this Ramadan to be a moment of a turned page with Him 
And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for anyone we have harmed, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be forgiven by them as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct our affairs in regards to the hereafter and correct our affairs in regards to the dunya. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who catch Laylatul Qadr and who do not have Laylatul Qadr invalidated on the Day of Judgment. Oh Allah, accept it from us, allow us to catch it and allow us to see it on the Day of Judgment and do not let it be amongst those Laylatul Qadrs that are invalidated. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.